Hi there, and welcome to another one of my classic reviews where I pick one of my all time favourite movies, give it a rewatch, and then come review it. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Fish Tank, which is one of those really great little films that comes out of the UK, one of those real classic British kitchen sink social realist stories. And I have to say, this is kind of the modern extension of that kind of thing that built up in Britain historically in cinema. The British historical legacy is often being social realism and Fish Tank is probably the finest modern film version of this. So it came out in 2009 and it was directed by Andrea Arnold who's kind of built up herself a little niche as being a director of impoverished young women. I mean this and American Honey are essentially companion pieces I'd say. I mean they're very very similar in their outlook on the world. So Fish Tank basically follows Mia who's a teenager, she's been expelled from school, she's 15 and her mother gets a boyfriend who begins to show an interest in Mia who begins to be caring towards her, is finally someone who is nice to her and then things get messy and complicated and she slowly goes through this coming of age story and it's one of those films which is just deeply deeply human, deeply deeply moving. That I think the key thing about Fish Tank is that it's one of those films which really shows somebody and shows a world that is rarely seen in cinema. So Britain has for the past few decades kind of had the growth of an underclass so for a bunch of different reasons, socially, politically, economically, we now have a kind of underclass, people that, you know, people might call chavs. This chav culture really has sort of grown and Fish Tank is almost certainly, I think, the best film I've seen to depict people who live in this young urban world because these people are really left behind by society and their voices are silent. They have no representation in power or in the media, in politics. Their representation really doesn't exist. And so Fish Tank is really commendable on for that alone, for really giving a voice to a character living that life. But beyond that, I think it's just a really great film. So the first thing to really fucking praise about Fish Tank is the way the character really is developed because the lead character Mia really is someone who's angry, who's loud, who's sweary. She's not someone that is instinctively likeable. But I think what the film really does is it's really non-judgmental. Fish Tank doesn't judge its characters. It doesn't attempt to tell you who's right and who's wrong because to varying extents all the characters have flaws and to varying extents the characters are often quite bad to each other or to themselves. There is a lot of dislikable people here but I think the crux of it is that we're not meant to like them, we're meant to understand them, we're meant to understand why they are how they are. And I think Fish Tank really comes from a place of trying to be fair to everybody on screen. And I think it really comes from a place of trying to let you understand. And I think what's really important here is you do surely understand why Mia is like she is. She comes in a world where no one understands her, where no one really respects her, where she's trying to get out of the life that she has, but she can't. I mean, she really is trapped. I mean, she can dance, which is kind of a key plot point that she can dance and she wants to be like a dancer, but having a skill isn't very useful in, you know, in this really sort of unforgiving world. She really can't get anywhere with it. You know, there's a constant plot point of her trying to save a horse that's kind of trapped. And like, I think it's kind of telling that she's trying to save a trapped horse, you know, like she's also trapped. I think another thing that's interesting is the film uses a four by three aspect ratio. It's much more compact, it's not widescreen. And I think part of that is to show me a sort of not being able to go into a landscape. She's stuck in like this concrete landscape of just buildings and like just this urban world and she can't go beyond that, the confines are limited. But I think at the same time it also gives the screen some height, so you kind of see Mia standing tall, you kind of see the sky, you see that ability, that opportunity that is a buffer. And so, although the film is really about living in poverty, living in a world that is unfair to you, that doesn't understand you, that makes you angry, you know, her anger at points seems justified considering how nobody seems to get her and she really is just let down by the system. The actress playing Mia is Katie Jarvis who is a complete amateur and her performance here is fucking stunning. She's like really great here. She, this is one of the best performances of the last 10 years. She really sells every single moment of her character and I absolutely adore her in this film. She's fantastic and her character is so high energy and loud and angry all the time and I think Katie Jarvis really really sells every second of it in a totally believable way. I think this is film which is really helped by just how realistic it is. I mean, as someone who comes from somewhere where there is a lot of people like the characters in the fish tank, I really think the dialogue is really spot on here and I think some of the slang is really quite believable, it's really quite genuine. The other real standout actor here is Michael Fassbender who plays Connor who is the boyfriend of Mia's mother and I think he's an interesting character. He's certainly charismatic but he's also very manipulative, he's definitely a dick. There's certainly a point to a bit of him taking advantage of Mia. He's certainly a little bit slimy and I think what's really important here is that Michael Fassbender sells both sides of him. He sells the likeable side of him but he also really sells the fact that the dude is underneath a bit of a douchebag. I think there's a lot to hear about Mia's relationship with Connor which is really complicated. I think part of that is because 
he's the first person who seems to genuinely care about her, he's genuinely nice to her, he also seems to liberate her from the world that is around her, that is blocking her in, he seems to be the person that's going to take her out. There's also kind of a few things here about the relationship between Mia and her mother, they're angry, they're bitter, they're fighting over each other within the house that they're in, they're sort of fighting for power, you know, to some extent they're also kind of fighting for sexual dominance in the house. There's also kind of a point to be made here about the use of blocking, there's some really great shots here between the characters, especially between Connor and Mia, where the characters block into each other. It's kind of like one character will stand in a way that hides you a character, which I think kind of indicates the intimacy of so much of the bones between the characters, and there's a lot of sexual tension and creeping momentum in this movie. It's a lot of it is very, very slight. It's all about sly looks, about people trying to act like they don't care, but deep down we know they care and we know they care and they're trying to show to one person they do care and to another person they don't care at the exact same moment and it's about those little moments and it's a really emotional little movie it's quite heartbreaking at points it's a film that really grows it's a film that really starts off being one thing and just grows into this ever-expanding circle of life and of a teenager trying to really find herself in a world that is complicated and i think as a story, it just grows in its realism. I think there's also some great use of music here. I particularly like the use of Naz right at the end and the song Life's a Bitch is really well titled considering the nature of Fish Tank as a film. I think Fish Tank is one of those films that just kind of builds up into this momentum of just the frenzy of life and it's just about getting to this point where although I don't think Mia's story ends within Fish Tank, I think her story reaches a point where it's the right thematic closure. It's that thing of she's had an experience, she's gone from A to B and now she's going on to something else. And I think what's really important here is that although the film really takes its time to get there and it goes through a lot of ups and downs and I think the character does and I think all the character motivations are varied and I think it's really multi-layered. I think what's really important is it really is just a simple coming of age story and it's not much else. There's no thrills here. It's simple. It's sweet, it's genuine, it's realistic, it's emotional, it's also harsh and nasty and it really emphasises the brutality of a world that has left behind an entire generation of, the, of youth. I think it's a film that really, really matters. I think it's important for people to see it. I think it's a film that really shows how everyone's story can be valid and can be told well. I think it's a film that commits to making its characters understandable even though too many they will not be. I think it really commits to just showing people without judging them and I think what's really really important is that at the end of the day Fish Tank just works. It's one of those films that is just effective at what it does. I really don't have any flaws with Fish Tank that I particularly think of whenever I watch it I really get into it and I really enjoy it and I always find something of worth from it because I think there is something of worth in showing a character like Mia and giving her a screen and giving her a voice which society actually doesn't and so yes Fish Tank is one of those films which I will always recommend. It is a classic forever in my mind. I would love to hear your thoughts on Fish Tank if you've seen it because I've certainly seen some reaction to this film which I found left positive and glow in the mind. If you like this review then please give it a like and you can subscribe if you want to hear more of my reviews. You can also follow me on Letterboxd or Twitter to read more reviews that I don't put on YouTube and thank you for watching.